Well, it's a uh, very warm welcome back to a second half independent of Tube Studio commentary. Uh, the game at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium has just resumed for a second half action. It's uh, Tottenham nil, Luton one. Uh, Tati Chong with the goal on just three minutes, giving uh, Luton the lead. And as you would expect after that early goal that Spurs conceded, they had a uh, lion's share of possession, 70 plus percent for most of the first half. They had decent chances, decent build up until eventually uh, they uh, hit the post twice with a chance for a son. And uh, less than 30 seconds into this game, we're going to get a, a yellow card here. It's Pedro Porro, who's a, a, a lying in agony on the ground there. And it's uh, Peli Mapanzu, another one of those uh, players that's been up, uh, has been up the divisions with Luton, starting in the uh, conference. And yeah, he's caught uh, Pedro Porro there. Linesman was flagging that one straight away. Mapanzu's got that look on his face like he can't believe it, but I think he probably was just a little bit too quick into charging. That's something that Luton will have to be aware of. Barkley and Mapanzu now both on uh, yellow cards, but uh, we're a minute into this uh, second half. It's myself, Paul Shabakovic, and John Hogan uh, taking you through the action. John, that was a strong challenge there on Pedro Porro, but that aside, it's, it's gonna be, it could be a long half here for Luton. They've got to try and keep that same result they had in the first half. Yeah, they've got to keep it going. Uh, it's difficult. Essentially, they, they were second best in that first half. But you know what? They found themselves the right side of the scoreline. And it gives them something to hang on to, doesn't it? You know, uh, uh, change have been made at the break. Uh, Kulisevsky off and Brendan Johnson on. He will have his axe to grind. But we were, I, I thought at least, uh, Kulisevsky looked good the first half and was creating enough. And it was Werner who you know, uh, was was having a struggle. Well, we, we both said when we saw uh, Brennan Johnson stood on the side of the uh, of the pitch waiting to come on at half-time, we both said, well, he's, this is likely to be for Werner then, isn't it? Because he wouldn't be Kulusevski. He's the one who's, who can uh, make something out of nothing on that uh, right-hand side. But for whatever reason, it uh, was felt by uh, Postacoglu and his coaches that um, it needed to be Kulusevski that goes off. So uh, Johnson is on. Just to tell you as well that... Uh, uh, Daiki uh, Hashioka, Japanese uh, defender, has come on for Reese Burke for, for Luton in the uh, second half. So uh, Burke perhaps on a yellow card, perhaps uh, worrying about his pace against some of this uh, Tottenham attack. We'll come back to that in a second because Spurs are on the attack now. It's with Madison just at the edge of the area. He rolls it into Johnson. Johnson's ball across to Son. He did have a, a shot at goal, but he was charged down almost immediately. Good block there from uh, Ted and Menke. And the ball now cleared back towards the halfway line. But Spurs come back straight away here with uh, Bissouma in towards uh, Madison. Madison just uh, dropping a little bit deeper this time. They're trying a quick ball down the uh, right-hand side. Flicked on by uh, Pape Sar. That was well read, though, by Tati Chong, who uh, goes down. Oh, I tell you what, Tati Chong uh, with a bit of a lunge there. He felt as though he was fouled, and then uh, the free kick wasn't given, after which he took a real swipe at Pedro Porro there. Yeah, I mean, he's striking for the ball again. He, uh, he got hooked up. I thought he got fouled, and then he was a little bit late. Um, I didn't see too much wrong with that, really. Um, yeah, just looking at that change, Hashioka only. He's a right back by trade, isn't he? Maybe uh, Kabori moves back on the inside. But yeah, he was doing well, uh, you know, uh, against Timo Werner. So, I don't know. It's, uh, it's an interesting one, really, whether or not they, they feel as though they need Kabori's uh, strength in the middle. And then, of course, they do lose that uh, pace out wide. We'll see. It's a free kick to Spurs. It's about 35 yards out on the right-hand side. It's going to be uh, whipped in here by Pedro Porras. It's going to be a, they can try to get a flat ball here to uh, get past this uh, Luton offside line as well. Porro with the arm up. That's far too low. And it's uh, a bit of a shank clearance there at the edge of the uh, penalty area from Andros Towns. And it goes out for a throw, so it's not the end of the world. But that cross from Porro is just far too low. There's no chance for anyone to get on the end of it. Yeah, it's a poor ball, isn't it? Um Anyway, uh, loaded box. Uh, like I said, there's no great height. You know, Reese Burke was the tallest, uh, I think, out of the uh, Luton players. So, um, uh, Hashoka comes on. He's scraping six foot. You know, it, it's certainly not a land of the Giants game, but uh, and neither are Spurs particularly big. But anyway, yeah, here come Tottenham. Yeah, they do with Madison. Nice little jinking run. Gets into the penalty, and he wanted it back on his right foot, and that just gave enough time uh, for a challenge to come in there from Alfie Doherty. And now uh, Ross Barker with a slightly risky pass back across his own penalty area. Then it's Hashoka with a quick ball down the uh, right-hand side into Townsend. Townsend then in towards uh, uh, Kabore. Does really well to turn and Luton play their way out of trouble. They're on the halfway line now with uh, Tati Chong. Quick ball down the left-hand side for Alfie Doherty. And Luton have got players uh, forward in this attack. It's Doherty's ball. Perhaps just a little bit undercooked there to Chong. That allowed for a, a very good challenge at the edge of the by Porro, but Doherty wins the ball back in midfield, plays it square to Barkley, Barkley goes for it with the left foot, and he forces a one-handed save from Vicario, who then gets up and quickly dives on that loose ball, but again, just shows you that Luton aren't, uh, aren't, aren't going to just sit back, if they get a chance to go forward, they will do. 
Yeah, whenever they get the ball, I, I just think there's no messing about. They're very clinical, aren't they? Uh, out of this movement, they get a shot away, and I think that shot might have been on target. Uh, wow, we well, if 10 man Burnley get back into that game against Chelsea, uh, that'll be a minor miracle, but it looks like they might have got an equaliser. Yeah, we're getting uh, indications there could be an equaliser at, uh, at, at Stamford Bridge, but here comes Spurs now. Plenty of space down the right side. A ball across, and Spurs are back in it. It's 1-1, uh, one, one, Timo Werner with absolutely no reaction, doesn't celebrate at all. He just turns as if he just scored a consolation goal uh, to make it 5-1 rather than 5-0. But uh, this, uh, the crowd at uh, the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, they've certainly reacted a little bit more and Spurs are level on 51 minutes. Well, you're right when you said a little bit more. But that tells you a lot about what they, th they think or feel about this. You know, that, that's been uh, sort of prevalent. The, we, we ought to be beating these guys. And in the end, the goal comes fairly simply, a ball across the face, and he, he gets there first. We talked about the pace of uh, Kabore, but, uh, you know, the new man, Hashok, has come on. Uh, is he covering him? I don't know. Anyway, Kabore's got his eyes on Timo Werner, but he's, he's just a nanosecond late, isn't he? And when the ball comes in uh, from that right-hand side, it's a good ball across the face. <gasps> it's Kabore. Kabore own goal. That's why we didn't see much from... Uh, what is Kabore doing? I mean, I mean, he's hammered that. <laughs> he's yeah. absolutely leathered that into his own goal. It's, a, it's an unusual uh, situation. Now, could there be uh, a, some sort of saviour here for Spurs? I don't see where the offside... Uh, there's no offside as Johnson puts the ball in. There's no offside when he plays it into Werner. The only offside might be when Johnson gets the original pass closer to the halfway line. But uh, no chance. I didn't see that as being offside either. So, yeah, it's just a, an unnecessary VAR check there. And the referee, Jared Gile, does point to the uh, halfway line. We can resume play. It is 1-1. And uh, confirming as well that it is also 1-1 at uh, Stamford Bridge. It's Josh Cullen with the goal for uh, Burnley. Uh, down to 10 men. Their manager's been sent to the stands. But they get an early equaliser in the second half. Again, uh, play, you know, plenty of spirit there. Josh Cullen had seen him play recently for the Republic and he, he's a decent player, you know. Uh, and obviously, they, you know, they, they played well last season, not so much this, but, you know, a good back end to the season, you never know. But uh, I, I, I doubt that they'll, they'll get anything from that. But uh, anyway, good for them. They'd grab a goal. And in this game, of course, now it's more difficult for Luton. Uh, you know, the, the reward was three points. Now, you, you, you still think they're creating the odd little bits and pieces, but more likely that Tottenham come forward and, and end up scoring a couple more goals, I reckon. Well, it's perfect timing for Spurs, really. Getting a goal uh, to make it 1-1 on 51 minutes, as you say, is Luton are in that difficult bind now of wanting to keep the ball to, to, to try and uh, get some sort of pressure on Spurs. But, of course, if they uh, try and push too far forward... Spurs have certainly got the players to try and uh, take advantage of that if there's anything uh, given away in midfield as Bissouma now plays the ball down the uh, left-hand side for Werner. His uh, pass is cut out there by uh, Hashioka. Townsend now back towards uh, Kabore, who's been uh, closed down here by uh, Werner. Has to get back towards Kaminsky. Doesn't waste any time. Long clearance there from the Luton keeper. Taken down by Morris, but he's immediately under pressure from Bissouma. Then Pape Sar nods the ball forward to Madison, who tries it out. Landish outside of the boot pass towards the edge of the area. Headed away uh, by uh, headed away there by Mengi, but uh, Spurs come back again here on the right-hand side with uh, Brennan Johnson. Back towards Pedro Porro. Three Spurs players at the edge of the area. It's a nice little turnaround there from Son. Across the six-yard box. Whoa. And there is Kabore again. <laughs> I thought he was going to score another own goal. There is a slight, sort of almost a half a smirk on his face there as well. But on this occasion, he clears it and it's just out for a throw. Well, he's getting good at that, isn't he now? <laughs> <laughs> he didn't score that. But honestly, the, the way the ball was whipped in, you know, he's facing his own goal. He's, what, two yards out? More likely hits the back of the net. Now, I don't know how he managed to shin that one clear. I bet he wished that he'd done that first time around. We'll take another look. It's a lovely move, isn't it? Uh, and uh, eventually uh, a nice ball. But uh, he just got around the back of it this time, able to side foot that away. Uh, he was at a, a much better angle. But I think it's because he, he also read where Timo Werner was this time. Last time, I, I felt he was very late with his movement into the box. You know... Uh, and if it was, he, if it was he, almost like he was trying to catch up, and that's why probably he did shank that ball into the net in, in the way that well, he Well, if, if he didn't get anything on it, uh, he must have felt that Timo Werner was, was going to do something, you know. Looks like the Blades may have grabbed a goal, you know. They were a big prize, 3-4-1 uh, to win at home at Bramall Lane, but uh, we'll wait for confirmation. Yeah, Fulham are a decent side over the last uh, few games, but that'll be a real problem. That's, that's, well, that's a potential problem here for... Uh, 
for Luton. They gave the ball away inside their own box. However, the pass was played uh, to an unmarked Pape Sar who was in an offside position. The flag was going to go up. Referee Jarrod Gile say we don't need the flag. The keeper's caught the ball. We can just play on. <coughs> but uh, more uh, warnings there for uh, Luton that Spurs want to uh, have the lead in this game as quickly as possible. Yeah, on one hand, I'm thinking, brilliant. You know, Spurs flooding players forward. They, they've seen the early game. Everybody wants to score. On the other hand, I'm thinking, well, they're, they're still really overcommitting and leaving themselves vulnerable. Uh, if Pape Sarr thinks he's the best number nine at the club, well, he might be, but uh, <laughs> I, I don't see that. No, um, a few players ahead of him, I think, in, I, that, in that role. Yeah, in which respect, I think maybe they're just getting a bit greedy. But here's Pedro Porro, yeah. here they come. Good ball in from Porro into Son. Son hits it first time, saved by Kaminsky. And then before anyone can get onto a rebound, Tedan Mengi hooks that one away. It's either out for a throw or a corner. Just to say that it was uh, Chile international Ben Brereton Diaz that's uh, made it uh, Sheffield United 1 Fulham nil. There's no offside when that ball is played in. Doherty was playing everybody on side inside the penalty area. So it's just as well that uh, Kaminsky can make the save with his feet and then uh, Mengi can make the clearance. Yeah, Hashioka was chasing his man there just behind him. You know, uh, you don't get anything for that. Short corner taken and it's teed up here for uh, Johnson who strike gets a big deflection, actually angles away from goal in the end. And that will allow uh, Tati Chong with a, a, a chunk. Plenty of time there to clear that one up towards the halfway line. Destiny Doggy was the last one back for uh, Spurs, so he gets the ball back to Vicario, uh, who gets it away from Townsend, who was the last, uh, who was the furthest player for uh, Fulham, for uh, Fulham, for uh, Luton, trying to push forward. So uh, just a rundown of the scores, just a one uh, goalless uh, draw in the Premier League now. It's Bournemouth nil, Everton nil, Chelsea one, Burnley one, Nottingham Forest nil, Crystal Palace one, Sheffield United one, uh, Fulham one, and here at uh, the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, it is uh, Tottenham one. Luton won as uh, Hashioka is caught in the back there by Udogi. Referee giving the uh, free kick the way of uh, Luton. And uh, wait and see whether or not this... Uh, this looks like a bad one here. He's uh, holding his uh, lower back here. And uh, actually, I don't. I said that uh, Udogi caught him. Just looking at that replay, I don't think Udogi does much wrong. It's just the angle and the way Hashioka then hits the deck, maybe. I think I think his elbow into uh, his midriff. And I, I think Hashioka is his own worst enemy there because he's diving after a ball. He's got no right to get, flinging himself at it. And your doggy just turns and his, his elbows into the into the small of his back. Just looking <laughs> at the goal again, I mean, you've got to laugh really because, you know, uh, uh, Kaboris had a really good game and, th and then for him to absolutely pummel the ball into the back of the net, uh, he, he felt he had to, to do something there clearly. Yeah. But, uh, you know, l like we said, he just got caught in his haunches a split second. And, and when you do that at this standard, you, you're dead. He's, no. got, he's got to be careful though, because he absolutely booted the post in frustration. He, also, he sort of gave it a light headbutt as well. Thankfully, the, the headbutt wasn't as, as hard as the kick on the post. But you can see he was rushing back at pace and he wanted to get there ahead of Werner. It's one of those where, whilst it, it, it looks amusing in the way Kabore's clipped the ball into his own net, if he wasn't there, then Werner scores anyway. So it's one of those where he's got to try and get on the ball somehow. Imagine he breaks his foot kick in the post. And you might uh, think that sounds fanciful, but I do a bit of cricket. And... Uh, well, the batsman used to regularly punch his bat on the way out, broke his hand, and then he was out for six months. You well, know, it was the uh, same as uh, with uh, Portsmouth all those years ago where Lua Lua used to do the triple somersault yeah, when yeah, he yeah. scored. Harry Redknapp said, don't do that because if you get injured, we need you for the, for the end of the season. Scored a big goal. So did the celebration. Had to go off straight away because he pulled his hamstring and he was out for three weeks. So, uh, <laughs> it's uh, as I say, sometimes it's just one of those things we have to be careful. But uh, uh, the free kick has been given here to, to Luton. It's in a decent position. And it's the usual suspect standing over it, right-footed Barkley and uh, left-footed Doherty. I said Barkley can certainly hit it with his uh, left foot, but he is more of a right footer. He's going to leave it here for Doherty because it is over on the uh, right-hand side. Getting word of a potential equaliser at uh, Bramall Lane as well. So Sheffield United weren't enjoying their lead for very long uh, in that game against Fulham. But uh, back here at the uh, Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, it's 59 minutes gone. Spurs 1, Luton 1, and it's a free kick here to the visitors. Doherty going towards the back post, and Morris was fighting for that one. But uh, he was uh, watched all the way by Romero, and eventually it's out for a throw. Chance here now for uh, Luton with the throw, and it is an equaliser for Fulham at uh, Bramall Lane. Just waiting for a confirmation of the uh, goal scorer in that one, but it's a throw on to Luton here. Doherty is across to take it. Just uh, needs to 
pick out a teammate. It doesn't look like he's going to try and launch it long. It's a short throw to Barkley. Doherty gets it back. Then, then it's Barkley again. He's got three uh, Spurs players around him. Just about tries to hold it up for Chong. Loses his balance at the end. Can't hold on to the ball. And then it's Madison who sweeps a quick ball towards Son, who was uh, stopped there by uh, Mengi. The referee gives a uh, free kick uh, the way of uh, Spurs. Although well, no yellow card. Yeah, but, yeah. Has he forgotten his card now? Uh, don't know. Um, I, I, it's a lottery what he gives and what he doesn't. But uh, uh, anyway, good little counter attack. I just felt in that, you know, uh, Lutner feeding on scraps. The Tai Chong there, there, there was a little uh, uh, 50 50 at the edge of the box. I felt he had to win that. You know, he looks willy willy and, and almost small, doesn't he? Uh, uh, slight. You know, he, I, he's about six foot, but he, he looks a bit, you know, I use the word beanpole advisedly, but he didn't look strong at all there. And as soon as he lost the ball, they were in big trouble. 61 minutes gone here, still 1-1 at uh, the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. Uh, so Luton enjoying a little bit of an attack there. By the way, it was uh, João Paulinho that got the goal for uh, Fulham. So 1-1 in uh, that game. In fact, uh, it's only just uh, having had a very slow start to the afternoon in terms of goals being scored. There's only now two games left in the Premier League. They haven't had both teams that are getting at least one goal. So uh, things are starting to open up a little bit. Still goalless uh, at the vitality. Though a game that both Bournemouth and Everton really ideally would like to win. Bournemouth just to get themselves further away from any relegation threat. And Everton, of course, uh, bang in trouble. But here comes Spurs now. Good ball from Pedro Porro to the edge of the area. Pape Sar tees it up for uh, Brennan Johnson, who's ball across towards Werner. And uh, once again, not sure whether Werner was offside, not sure if Werner got the final touch. In fact, it got cleared out for a throw. It was that quick that it didn't even go out. Uh, I think it's Kabore again. I think he's done a good job. But now Son has turned and nobody went with him. He's got loads of space and he turns the ball across towards Madison, who wants it onto his right foot. He takes just a little bit too long. And I think he was buried with the challenger, stopping that one going towards goal. But uh, Pedro Porro with another chance. He puts a cross in, which is heading Whoa. towards the near post. Kaminsky's had to dive and he's fallen into the net. I think he's hurt himself as well, the, uh, the Luton keeper, in uh, making that save. So we're going to have a little bit of a, a pause here now while uh, Kaminsky is checked over. Yeah, I think that's quite a heavy collision with the post there. And uh, I think he goes face first. He just scrapes that ball out. He wasn't expecting. He wasn't you know, expecting a, a cross, aren't we? And I think he takes the deflection that's looping it in at that near post. Uh, and then when he, uh, he comes to, uh, to clear his lines, you know, uh, the, the, there is a bit of a sickening thud well, there. I, I don't think he hits it with his head. I mean, it, it, you know, all jokes aside of him literally hitting the post. I think that uh, let's hope, obviously, there's nothing too serious here. Um, uh, you were absolutely right, by the way. That previous attack, which was played towards Verno, it was Kabore that, uh, that got the challenge in. And... Meanwhile, the plot thickens all over the place. Uh, there's a goal at the city ground from Chris Wood. The, uh, the Kiwi forward has made it 1-1 between uh, Forest and Palace. We're also getting word of a potential goal for Bournemouth against Everton in that game, which was goalless. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Luke Berry is being uh, beckoned off the field by uh, East Bissouma. And uh, there's no way I could broadcast what uh, Berry told to Bissouma, but he's basically <laughs> saying, look, would you mind leaving me alone, please? I'm, I'm going off the field at my own pace. But uh, he's off. And it's a double substitution being readied here. Luke Berry is off uh, for uh, Luton. And uh, confirming that Jordan Clark has uh, come on to replace him. Just waiting to see if... Because it did look to me as though he was preparing another substitution there as well, uh, Rob Edwards. But no, it's just that one change for now. So uh, Clark is on uh, to replace uh, Luke Berry. 18-year-old uh, English midfielder. Uh, 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 English midfielder, I should say, with the uh, number 18 on his uh, shirt and he's going to get straight into the action here because Luton are on the attack down the uh, right hand side it's a ball played into Berry and as he tries to get across it he's uh, challenged there by Dragerson and uh, being on the field has, has had an impact already here from uh, Clark because he's won his side a corner yeah Dominic Solanke has, uh, has scored the uh, ex Liverpool player against uh, Everton uh, I think he, he's rock solid now with Solanke yeah, he's gone from being that forward that has all the skill but doesn't actually get goals to actually now becoming a, a really good goal scorer. He's yeah. pretty bankable, isn't he? Uh, I still think he, he's, he'd be behind Ivan Tony in thinking for England. Uh, quite where Tony is, I, I, I don't know. But, uh, Absolutely. Well, it's, it's, it's interesting, really, as to whether who is, who's the first sub uh, after Harry Kane, of course. Is it Watkins? Is it Tony? Uh, or is there another option? As the corner kick comes in, it was cleared towards the edge. And the strike Whoa. comes in from Clark. And uh, it's, uh, I think it has gone, it taken a deflection, it's gone uh, out for a corner, but the initial corner was clear to the edge of the area. Jordan Clark, I tell you what, he's been on the field a minute or so. He's won his side a corner, and now he's gone for goal, and it needed wow. a great save there from Vicario. Yeah, he just pushed it round the post. Um, 
I mean, I've got to say that the, the marking is shocking, right? Uh, Clark's waiting on one side for the ball to pop out. The, the number 12 for Luton's waiting on the other for the ball to pop out the other way. That's Kabore. Both waiting to get shot on, on goal. You know, both could have easily been marked, but they weren't, you know. Out swinging corner here from Alfie Doherty. Left footer from the left-hand side, headed away by uh, Romero. Still kept alive here by Ashioka. Goes down the uh, right-hand side here. It's uh, Clark again. But tries to tee it up here for Ashioka. Just a little bit short with the uh, the pass. It's cleared down the left-hand side. That's good work from Werner to keep that in play for Spurs. But all he can do is roll a ball to Son, which is uh, picked off here by uh, Issa uh, Kabore. So uh, the ball now back uh, on the halfway line. There's a bit of a loose ball there as well. And it's going to be uh, tracked all the way back to his uh, goalkeeper there by uh, Ted and Mengi. Closed down there was Kaminsky, but uh, the goalkeeper still gets a bit of distance on that clearance. It's out for a throw around about the halfway line here for Spurs, which Pedro Porro has taken quickly. Uh, there's a, a third goal at Bramall Lane. And after Jean Paulini's equaliser for Fulham, cancelling out Ben Brereton Diaz's goal, is now Oli McBurney, who's made it 2-1 uh, to uh, Sheffield United. Bernie and Brewster both having problems for uh, the Blades this season in terms of being forwards and just don't get goals. But Bernie's one of those that can get you a goal, although albeit perhaps not as consistently as he'd like. Yeah, I, I was talking to a Blades fan the other day. I just said uh, he, he's a good player, but he, he's injury prone. And, you know, he's, he, he, is he coming back from injury? Is he going to get injured? It's all can that. be a bit hot headed as well. So, yeah. Oh, so yeah, yeah, Bernie. yeah. Yeah, but, but a decent striker, you know. Certainly is, since he's uh, put his side 2-1 up. And uh, with uh, Burnley drawing, Everton losing, Nottingham Forest now uh, drawing as well. It's getting interesting at the bottom of the table. Here comes Spurs. They're trying to make things interesting in front of Luton's goal. But the pass from Pedro Porro stopped here by uh, Issa Kabore. And now it's uh, Mengi back towards Doherty. Well, he has put in a shift, Doherty. We've seen him in attack now. He's uh, back in, inside his own penalty area. Tati Chong, uh, the uh, Luton goal scorer, back to Doherty again. It's now with uh, Peli Mapanzu. Square to uh, Chong, who gets uh, challenged there by uh, Madison. I don't know why Madison would even bother saying that it's not a foul. It clearly is. It will be a, a free kick to Luton. And uh, Tati Chong just needs a minute here. He feel, he's feeling a bit of pain in his uh, left thigh, it seems. Wow. Meanwhile, things are really hotting up at uh, Bramall Lane. Never mind 2-1 to Sheffield United. It's 3-1 to uh, the Blades now. Just to confirm the goal score in a moment, but uh, considering that they've looked like a team who've given up in so many games recently, that'll be a, a big boost for them, I think. Yeah, I think you always go out, particularly at home. You know, it's a it's a Blades eleven at Bramall Lane, and with a big crowd watching them, you, you just wipe the slate clean, go again. If you're having a good day, you do. They, they, they've got good players and a good manager. No reason why they they can't play well, and clearly doing a bit better today. Is now Spurs make changes. They do, yeah. Rodrigo Bentancur is going to come on to replace uh, Pape Sarr. Giovanni Lo Celso will come on to replace James Madison. Um, yeah, maybe he feels that, uh, you know, he's I mean, involved. There is, there is a round of midweek games coming up as well, so potentially yeah, yeah. he wants to have some of his uh, starting players uh, feeling fresh for that next one. Uh, the other thing, when I watched Bentancur, before he got his injury, I, I was thinking, well, he might be their best midfielder, you know. Um, Tai Chong goes off, and... Uh, uh, he got clipped by Madison uh, just five minutes ago. But I, I, like I said, I, I just don't think he lasts out 90 minutes anyway. So um, I, I'm not surprised that, that he's been well, changed. Well, he's, he's wandered off. He sort of trudged off the field now after that uh, challenge. I'm not sure. He looks like they were getting ready to bring bring him off the field. But I'm not sure they've confirmed the uh, the substitution just yet. But just to confirm, the Celso on for uh, Madison. Benton Kerr on for a Papisar. Just to confirm as well, Spurs' is, uh, next game is uh, away to uh, West Ham and that will be on uh, Tuesday night uh, so uh, perhaps uh, that uh, with uh, and then Spurs play Nottingham Forest in the unusual 6pm uh, kickoff uh, next uh, next Sunday due to uh, train strikes that was due to be a Monday night game but they've now moved it to a, uh, a Sunday evening it's the usual time let's have a 6 o'clock kickoff on oh. a Sunday it's not right now. No, it? we're, not, we're not La Liga, do you know what I mean? It's, uh, it's, it's a strange, strange time. But uh, we're at the uh, three-quarter mark of the game. 69 minutes gone. It is uh, Spurs 1, uh, Luton 1. And it will be John to take us through to full time. So, uh, yeah, just looking at, uh, at the squad. You know what they'd give for a man of Solomon fit. But anyway, a ball comes across and uh, headed back across the face. A shot comes in in the end from Ben Tanker that's blocked at sources. Again, uh, they're looking for the grandstand finish. There's another attempt. He crossed Bentan Kerr. Did he get the old double kiss? I think it did come off the Uruguayan, and that will mean a goal kick. 
again, you know, you look at the respective benches, and uh, you just got to say for Luton that it, it's the reason that they've come unstuck in a lot of these games. Uh, Mengi uh, is uh, blocked there uh, with the unmentionables. Yeah, I bet that hurt. Um, but you, you look at the quality of play that comes off the, the Tottenham bench. You know, I know one or two coming back from injury, this, that, the other. But they're, they're good, strong international players who, you know, uh, are, are giving a, a good run of form. Like, Well, just just a point as well. That, uh, that there are two goalkeepers on Luton's bench today as well, just showing you that they are struggling to make up the numbers. They've got uh, former Arsenal subkeeper John Shea and, of course, Tim Krull, who we mentioned as well. So that, that always is a sign, I think, of a team that perhaps are struggling with injuries and struggling with outfield players they trust to come on the field in the second half if they're having to name two keepers. Yeah, that's right. I mean, uh, you know, with all due respect to Luke Berry, as as surprised to see him starting anyway. We'll break off because here come Tottenham again. It's Brendan Johnson. Good cutback. Shot comes in. It's blazed over the top. But uh, in the end, again, they're they're not really uh, too far away. Well, he's, he's got a great right foot, Pedro Porro. Not quite, not so much with the left foot. He was trying to hit that first time, just leaning back a little bit, unable to, to get it under control. But it's a great ball from Benson Kerr uh, to pick out uh, Johnson down the right-hand side. And then, as I say, on his weaker foot, it's not actually a bad effort from uh, Pedro Porro, but uh, he needs to have, uh, looking at that side angle, he almost actually found the top of the top corner as well. Yeah, uh, again, Luton's defending there. Uh, you know, he, he's not good enough. Um, when the ball's played back to, to Pedro Porro, two players have run past him to get back in position, but what's the point of doing that if you're just allowing a free shot? So uh, Pellian Panzi runs past him, and Hashioka runs past him thinking, oh, I need to get back. Why? You know, <laughs> fresh air ain't, ain't going to take that shot. It's the man you just run past and, and left to his own devices. But like you said, he's, he, he, he strike their uh, side foot, left foot, just got underneath it. If a bit of defending to do. Poros on the ball now, playing out from the back. Just to say that it was uh, Brereton Diaz with his second goal of the afternoon. There was a VAR check for handball, but that has now been confirmed as a goal. So Sheffield United lead 3 1. Yep. Yeah, um, goal difference. Uh, you know, need, needs a lot of massaging, doesn't it? But uh, anyway, uh, you do no more than win, I think. And it looks like they might have the three points. So here come the uh, Luton now, just at the edge of the area of the ball with uh, Chong, who's still out there. Uh, and then he finds Clark. Was he offside? I think the flag had probably gone up there, but uh, the sloppy play, really tired, tired play from uh, Chong. I felt the ball, that ball was never on. Um, Joe Clark's done all right since he'd come on, and uh, Chong now goes down. He's tramped up. Yeah, I mean, as I say, <laughs> it's almost like it's almost like the Luton bench don't believe what you've been saying since the start of the match that Chong can't really do a full 90 minutes. He's been knocked about a couple of times. He's had a couple of. Uh, Strong, challenge, strong challenges on him, and now we are seeing some more activity on that. Luton bench was that uh, striker Corley Woodrow, I think, getting ready to yeah, come on. It, it would make sense, I think, for him to come on. There is always a goal in him, and um, it was actually quite nice hearing him on the radio a couple of weeks ago after he got a goal for Luton, just saying what the atmosphere is like and how he doesn't get many minutes on the field, but he's still very happy to be at the club. And Rob Edwards has got a real sort of positive attitude at training and stuff. And you can see that. It's not, it's not, it's not exactly revelation. We, we know that Luton are uh, very positive in their approach. And uh, say it's, uh, it's, it's just seeing that uh, replay of the, uh, the Chong goal again. But uh, he's, done well t he's done well today. I think that's, uh, that's something. Although we did see Woodrow getting ready to come on there, but there's also another substitution being readied here by uh, Rob Edwards. So potentially... Looks like it's uh, going to be uh, Onyedima, the uh, Nigerian uh, forward, midfielder or forward. He's going to uh, come on now uh, to uh, come on. Originally from uh, Plumstead in uh, East London. Uh, as, as West Ham as it gets, really, I think, around that part of, uh, of London. But in any case, it was Werner on the attack down uh, the left for us, Spurs, but he was in an offside position. Yeah, so uh, Fred Onyedima, no, on uh, no Corley Woodrow just yet. I'd written him down, but he, he's in there. It's uh, still one apiece, and do you know what? Uh, I, I, I keep thinking, oh, I haven't taught them won this game, but we're still we're still watching it. We're still watching the odd attack from Luton, and they're not giving up. So uh, I dare say we shouldn't. I'm sure that the Spurs fans uh, expect the three points out of the but game. But that kind of spring in the step the Spurs had when they were one 0 down at half time, but pushing forward, they seem to have lost that a little bit in the last ten minutes or so. I think. Yeah, it's, uh, I, I feel that the, there's been real complacency, uh, uh, you know, from them in this game. Um, uh, and that's sort of I, I don't know how that's managed to, uh, to, to to filter through I think the fans are expecting it uh, but you've got to give credit to, to Luton as well they uh, they do what they do 
Uh, you can't make them world beaters. They, they, there's a, you know, I talked about Tottenham ball watching, but you, you know, Luton have been pretty desperate. I, I think the midfield is not really set up to defend. You know, uh, anyway, uh, here again, Spurs on the ball. And again, it's with the Son, seen plenty of it, uh, not quite been his day today. And of course, um, they've had to rely on uh, Kabore and Ongol, but they, they created enough, so it was no big surprise that. And uh, on the other side of things as well, uh, if we, we want to uh, blame Kabore, he's actually he's having a good game. And in a, uh, a couple of other times when the ball came flying across, he, he actually managed to deal with it rather than it he going did, I mean, there, there was arguably a more difficult chance a few minutes later, which, we, which he did get to and managed to, to hook that out for a throw uh, rather than, uh, <laughs> than an own goal. But, uh, yeah, with 15 minutes to go, it, it, you, did, you did feel when Spurs scored after just six or seven minutes of the second half, you felt as though after 75 minutes they would be in front by now but then again just a pointless clearance there from Vicario which goes all the way through towards Kaminsky they have just lost their way a little bit yeah there have been a couple of flat spots haven't there uh, you know we, we, we saw that the first half they went a goal down then they had 10 or 15 minutes they did a lot and they went really flat didn't they and, and sort of surprisingly Luton uh, got back into it uh, had a sniff at uh, a second you know uh, then Spurs regathered as uh, Townsend still out there. I'm, I'm amazed. It, it's probably just because of uh, the lack of options, really. That somebody like Andros Townsend, he, he's still out there. He hasn't had much game time this season. And like at 32, he's, he's not Methuselah, is he? But you, you know what? Uh, he'll be feeling it. Anyway, uh, he closes down now. And things should really open up. And, and, and as I've said before, for Luton, you know, if you don't have a good bench, if you, you, you don't have those quality players to, to, you know, to bring on, uh, you can get unpicked really quickly in this division. But uh, Tottenham playing out from the back, being very patient, almost too patient, I would have said. As uh, the ball uh, with the Vicario gets it out of his feet. Dragicin, not a good ball forward, uh, looking for his captain, but uh, allows uh, uh, Ted and Mengi to put a good, strong challenge in. I think Mengi's played well today. I know he scored an own goal, but Kabori, for me, they uh, I think those two. And then Andrus Townsend, he's played a good few balls in and uh, his little run led to the first goal. There have been some good performances. There have been. As, as I mentioned, again, not to scare Luton fans who are listening, but uh, their, <laughs> their next few games are very, very tough. They're away to Arsenal in midweek. Uh, then they're at home to Bournemouth, away to Man City, and then at home to Brentford. Those are the next few games. But uh, we'll break off from that because here comes Spurs on the attack. Yeah, Dragosin uh, driving forward. But the, uh, the ball might come from that left-hand side. They're pretty central now as we're getting Lo Celso uh, involved. Then the ball comes across, and has he cleared oh. the line then? Well, uh, I'm sure the referee's watch has gone there. Jared Gillette uh, making no movement. The ball rolled right across the face. It must have, uh, you know, not quite gone fully over the line. It looked uh, like it had, but not quite. Here come uh, Tottenham. They've got a free kick on the left-hand side now. It's a poor challenge. How did that ball not go in? Well, I mean, it, it looked to me like it did, and so we'll, we'll see from the uh, the replay now, hopefully, because Spurs have won themselves a free kick on the left-hand edge of the penalty. This should give us enough time to see this move where the ball will look like it crossed the line. Werner on the overlap. I'll tell you what, does that, does that, but that, is that one of those like Villa against Sheffield United where the ball crossed the line but goal line technology missed it? Because it looked to me like it had gone over the line. Doherty... Well, well, I mean, it, the it ball's bouncing, so it's very difficult to tell. And, and, and the, the, the angle we have is sort of level with the edge of the six-yard box rather than with the line, so it's very difficult. Now we're getting the replay of the, the camera inside the net. And uh, no, mm. it's not conclusive, is it? But no. um, they've had enough time to check goal line technology. VAR could have done 10 other replays in the meantime. Nothing doing, so it's just a free kick to Spurs. Free kick uh, on the left-hand side. It's going to be a right football driven in, uh, you feel here. So, uh, can they get this right? Try and uh, mud at the wall, but uh, that's just a poor free kick. Hit too hard, blazed over the top. You know, w what we need to see now is that little uh, graphic of where the ball actually was on the line, which, which uh, you know, does all you need to clear all those little uh, nagging doubts. Well, so well, I'm sure we will see that. It always takes a minute or two for them, I think, to load that. I remember the game a couple of weeks ago, or maybe a couple of weeks ago, was when uh, Burnley beat Brentford. There was uh, an issue there. 
where they had to check whether or not a back pass had crossed the line and uh, it took a minute or two to get that uh, graphic up. Uh, meantime, there's a fifth goal at uh, Bramall Lane, but it's not she it's not uh, Fulham getting back into it. It's uh, Sheffield United with a 4-1 lead. This is going to be their best win of the season, arguably, just waiting for confirmation of that goal scorer. But uh, considering the Fulham, hey, in fact, we can confirm now it's uh, McBurney with a brace. So a brace for uh, Burton Diaz and McBurney in that game now. Yeah, they'll be enjoying themselves tonight, won't they? I know it'd be short-lived and all that, but, uh, you know, you uh, you take your fun while, while you can. And for Luton, I can't help but think it's a charmed life that the, the Luton goal's leading. In the first half, we saw Son with that shot that uh, hit one post and then hit the other. I mean, you, and, and at that point, I thought, well, you can't get much closer than that. And then we've just seen, oh, yes, you can. Because uh, we weren't certain that that ball, it looked like it crossed the line to me before Doughty, uh, you know, uh, was able to, to boot it away. We haven't seen the graphic, you know, uh, and, and sometimes the technology has not worked. Um uh, it'd be interesting to know, and it's too late now, isn't it? You know, imagine now they said, oh, it's a goal. Uh, it'd be, they'd be up <laughs> well, in arms, the, wouldn't the, they, Luke? The longer they don't show us that replay, the, the, that, uh, that graphic, the, the more dubious, I think, the more suspicious we're going to get about that. But, uh, yeah, we're at uh, 80 minutes, and uh, the referee playing an advantage here because uh, Luton are on the attack. Yeah, it's still 1-1. Here is Andros Townsend, still uh, pluckily trying to get the ball away. He got fouled, but the ball breaks back to Barkley now. He uh, just drops his shoulder, very nearly dragged it uh, around his man, but Bissouma read that. The counter-attack is on. And uh, here they go again with the Brendan Johnson. There's a lovely cut inside. Got plenty of time on the ball. He cuts it back. And uh, then uh, with uh, Lo Celso. And now into the box. The ball comes across. And, uh, well, I'm waiting for it to the back of the net. But Kaminsky comes up with it off uh, Timo Werner's effort. It's not, the right, it's not the right ball, I don't think, from Werner. He's, 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 it's like a sort of cross going across the six-yard box. In fact, no, it's just a shot. And I think you can see there's a frustrated... We can't see it in that last replay, but there was a frustrated look on uh, Huen Min Son because he wanted uh, to get that pass. And uh, meantime, Luton are going to have to split their physios into two, I think, because there are two Luton players down at the same time. Doherty is down on the ground. And it looks like... Is that the substitute Clark? He might be in a bit of trouble here as well. Meanwhile, in other games, the uh, fourth goal for Sheffield United has been uh, ruled out uh, for offside. Getting back to our game here, oh. that is, I mean, that is literally millimetres. I know that, that that expression is used very often when you hear something that's very, very close. But, I mean, arguably you would say that a different AI, a different computer graphic would have said that had crossed the line. It's literally just a couple of pixels there, isn't it? Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it is. It is millimetres. It might be one or two millimetres that, you know, the difference between a goal or not there. Doughty uh, held on in there. It, it looked, I mean, f the most of the ball was over the line, but it's got to be the whole of the ball, of course. And, you know, it just, uh, like you said, it, it might be in uh, uh, nano measurements there, but it, it it's as close as you come to a goal without it Absolutely. being. Absolutely. Well, they, they, but they have to obviously have a cutoff, but there's got to be something. Uh, uh, just to tell you as well that uh, it is now 2 1 to Chelsea against Burnley, and it was Cole Palmer with his second goal of the afternoon. We're also waiting to see here because Corley Woodrow. Uh, is getting ready to come on here for uh, Luton. This is going to be for Alfie Doherty, but it's not a like for like, so it's going to mean that somebody else is going to have to go into that uh, left-sided role. But uh, Corley Woodrow is an attacking option here for Luton, if they can actually get the ball to him. Exactly. Um, you know, number 10 and he's back, but uh, he uh, he's a target. And um, we'll have to work out who's doing what to who. Maybe on your dimmer, it's going to... Plug a gap in uh, on the left-hand side, but uh, it, it's not that obvious, is it? Anyway, they uh, they a long ball forward. Luton could still win this game, which is the weird thing, isn't it? I keep thinking, well, I, haven't we seen Spurs, you know, grab the winning goal yet? We haven't. There's seven minutes left. It'd be a good point this for Luton, but they still might get three. You know, uh, they're they're a plucky bunch. You know, uh, so many injury problems they've got now, as as, as well as everything else. You know. Uh, but they, they've got a togetherness and they haven't given up. And a lackadaisical uh, Tottenham Hotspur, you know, might still give them an opportunity. But uh, here comes Spurs down the left-hand side. Timo Werner, little ball uh, on his in it. Finds it, you doggy. But uh, he is uh, held up. Jordan Clark uh, going back, doing a job for his team. Uh, I thought he was fouled. Uh, and so too did the referee, more importantly. So there we go. Um, we got an early goal, didn't we? Uh, first goal at 3 o'clock to the Premier League. But uh, I, I feel our game has been overtaken. Uh, Burnley, I've got an equaliser. 
Wow. Me. That is, well, that just shows that there's just as the, the, this is the last international break we've just had before the end of the season. And it may well be that every team is just going for broke now. You know, although mathematically no team is relegated yet, you would imagine that uh, Burnley and Sheffield United are out of it. But they don't, they don't feel that way. They still feel as though they've got a chance. And Spurs making a very attacking change here with uh, East Bissouma off and Richarlison on. Yeah, so uh, the, uh, the Brazilian... Um I don't know if he played for Brazil uh, recently. I, I, I did. He was uh, on the bench uh, for England, but didn't come on in that game. Yeah, I did. I did uh, one of those games, I think. But uh, how memorable it was, was it? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, I yeah. say it was. Uh, it was a bit of. I, I did the England's um, uh, Brazil game. I thought that England weren't, weren't as uh, sort of. I thought England were going to show a little bit more in that game really against the Brazil side that uh, could be got at. But uh, in the meantime, it's uh, Luton that have uh, pushed forward. And they've uh, won themselves a corner kick. Yeah, the great opportunity here. Uh, plenty of targets. Uh, no more so probably than uh, than Morris there. But uh, Hashioka in there too. He's six foot. Can they get the delivery right? The ball comes in, headed away at the near post. It hasn't been cleared. It's steered around the corner by Jordan Clyde, but that's not good enough. And the uh, counter-attack is on now. A little cut from uh, Son. And a great ball out to Timo Werner. He's out on the left-hand side, scampering now. Brendan Johnson on the inner. Can he find him? Uh, the ball is uh, late back now and the shot comes in. It's hit the back of the net and it's Young Winson. And that is the winner perhaps for Tottenham. They've been messing about, complacent, but it looks like they might just have sealed the deal. It looks like they have done and it's a lovely bit of composure to set Son up at the very last second here because it looked as though Luton were getting back in numbers, but it was a quick counter-attack from Spurs. It's always the danger when the, uh, the lesser side, if I can say that, I've got a corner kick late on. And they're level in a game against Spurs. Do they send players forward? Do they just decide that it's one of those where they have to try and uh, defend that one, that, to defend that draw? But it's it's just too many Spurs players pushing forward. And I think it was uh, Brennan Johnson who just kept his composure. He could have tried to go for goal himself, but he had his back to goal, set up Son, and he was able to play it into the back of the net after a deflection as well, I think. Yeah, that's right. Um, and for Son, he, he proves deadly, doesn't he? Uh, an own goal and a goal for Hyung Min Son, captain. Uh, and also uh, a man who's uh, adept with his left as his right, and he, he just is a finisher. You know, uh, stats, uh, uh, you know, bear that time and time again. Again, it was a good break down the left-hand side. Just a little touch back from Brendan Johnson, and there we go, a little bit of help. Um, Werner, uh, again, he, it's a weird one because it's a good ball back, isn't it? It's a big, big deflection off Hashioka, isn't it, when it goes in? I, I wonder if his shot was on target here. Uh, is it going to go to the dubious goals? I don't know. That, that really would be a kick in the teeth for Lewin to have both of the, the goals they can see today be own goals. But uh, potentially they will be because it's such a big direction change, isn't it? The way it hits Hashioka, it's going left and Kaminsky's diving and then it hits the uh, defender and it goes right. So potentially there, there may be two own goals today. Yeah, they won't want them, but uh, they might have them. Some won't mind. Uh, like I said, he's deadly in front of the goal, but I, I'm not sure from looking at that again that his effort was on target. Anyway, you know, it was a good break. Uh, Sonny's going to go off now. Substituted. Uh, we can hear everybody getting excited in the studios around us as Hoybjerg comes on. You know, they've they just broken their own system, haven't they, to, to bring Richarlison on now. They, they bring a midfielder back in, a bit more uh, sense, common sense, if you like. Yes, absolutely. We've got uh, just over two minutes of regulation play to go, plus uh, injury time. And Spurs with this lead now. It's probably taken a lot longer for Spurs to have this lead than what uh, uh, than what Foster Cogler would have liked, considering they got that goal so quickly. The uh, the noise we heard was from the, the guys doing the uh, the game between Chelsea and Burnley, but no change in that score. It is still two two. But uh, here come Luton now. Townsend's shots charged down. There missed to be a chance on the right hand side here for Kabore. Yeah, he puts. Uh, well, I, I was going to say he puts the ball in. No, he doesn't. He stuffs it out in the full. Gabore, we haven't seen much of him going forward, but uh, and he's had a good game. But uh, again, Rob Edwards will look at his team, who, you know, they, they, they seem to be like a 70-minute team, then just run out of steam or don't can't bring on the substitutes with the, the quality that they need. You know, uh, it's, it's always such a good effort for such a long time. But you know what, football is, is played out now over the longer period. 90 minutes can be 100 minutes, and it can last forever. Bournemouth uh, look like they've uh, maybe got a winner against uh, Everton uh, now. We'll have to wait and see who's, who's scored that. Solanke, uh, like we said, bankable. Got their uh, earlier goal, but uh, the Toffees got back in it. 
I tell you what, it's been a very exciting afternoon, uh, Paul. We're, we're just watching the, the scores and all that, uh, and, and you can imagine what's going on elsewhere. The, the, uh, the Premier League, yeah, you know, the, 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 it's not second best to anything, is it? Drama, goals, excitement, it's got a lot. It's fantastic, and the fact that this season we've got seven or eight games to go and nobody's mathematically down. There's still three teams that could win the league. There's still six, there's five or six teams that can get into the three or four uh, Champions League places. It's fantastic. It's been a very open league this season. And, uh, and of course, uh, all the excitement as well of what's going to be happening next season with seemingly very strong teams getting promoted from the Championship, a new manager at Liverpool and everything else. So there's still so much uh, to go. But as I say, Fulham were 3-2 down at uh, Bramall Lane. We're now getting word of a potential 3-3. So it's going to be such a kick in the teeth, that for <laughs> Sheffield United, who were actually 4-1 up at one point in that game before VAR chalk one of their goals off. Bournemouth are 2-1 up against Everton. And it's a Seamus Coleman own goal. There's been a few own goals that scored this afternoon. And Fulham have equalised at Bramall Lane. Mengi's going to go off now. And... Uh, uh well, is, that, is that Mengi going off or is that them telling us we've got nine minutes of injury time? I think that might be uh, nine minutes of injury time. But, uh, yeah, nine minutes. Where did they find that? I don't know. Um, anyway, uh, very exciting games. I mean, if you averaged up the amount of goals that we've got this afternoon, it's going to be a bumper haul, isn't it? Two, uh, two games to go as well. I'll be covering Villa Wolves and uh, Brentford, uh, Manchester United. <clears throat> Looking forward to, uh, to both of them. Uh, but uh, maybe Spurs not quite done with yet. They uh, try to get forward. Uh, and for Luton, they've just got to use that nine minutes on the board, uh, springboard. It's a free hit now. You know, uh, did they think they were going to win the game? Well, they always go out there with the best intention. Listen, it's a one-goal game now. They, they've got eight minutes to, to, to grab a goal. You know, uh, they know what they need to do. They can get bodies forward. They've still got uh, Morris and, and Woodrow out there. So a chance, for, you know, uh, a, a chance for them to, to have a goal. Oh. Well, they've got to try. They've got to try with, with, the, with the amount of time that's left in the game. Just excuse me. I'm just trying to see what we're averaging for the uh, games we've uh, seen so far in terms of goals. And uh, in uh, si six games, we had 25 goals so far today. So we're doing all right, I think, in terms of, uh, of an average. It really has so, been. Yeah, so about four. Yeah, uh, about four a game. It's, yeah. uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it just shows that the, t the teams are going for it. And with uh, Spurs only 2-1 up, and there's still being uh, seven and a half minutes of injury time to play. Luton will still feel as though they're very much in it. I tell you what's exciting is that we, we did used to see back in the day teams part of the all four five one and you know boring go oh, the a grinding team. You don't get much of that. Uh, I you, think, frankly, it's because uh, the, the the bigger teams, if you like, and more teams across the, the league have now worked out how to break that down. I think that there are very few teams now who you could say are very good at sitting back and soaking up pressure because I think most teams have worked out how to how to break it down. Yeah, and it's uh, made life a lot more exciting. It's funny how tactics have gone on. You know, four, two, three, one. Uh, just a, you know, f five, six years ago, it used to be like imperious. You know, a four, three, three. Barcelona. Oh, it's very difficult to get that going. Newcastle play that system, but they ship goals, don't they? But it makes life exciting. Four, three, they won today. Uh, here come uh, Tottenham now, trying to get forward. Joy Björg, uh, Timo Werner into the box. Surely a chance for him. Takes it onto his left. I don't know what he's thinking about there. Again, I think Kabor has done a good job on him. He gets the ball in plenty of time. Should be getting a shot away. Should be getting a shot on target out of that. Great play by Hjoiberg. Uh, and look where he is, Werner. He's got to do. He's got so much time there, and it's that choice of he, he doesn't like shooting on his left foot, and yet he keeps going onto his left foot, and then not giving himself enough space uh, to cut back on the right. And uh, as I say, Postecoglou has been patient with Werner. He's given him a good run in the team, and he has obviously had a couple of goals and a couple of good performances. But I'm still not sure whether he's the, the long-term solution there for Spurs. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I think when when you have attackers who can't hit the back of the net, it, it, it's almost like giving the ball back to the opposition. You know, you wait, you waste, and you waste. I think Kyvitz for Arsenal is, is a similar vein. He's a marathon runner uh, who is a decent footballer, not a great finisher, and and he gives the ball away. I think those guys flatter to deceive and keep, you know, real finishers out of the team, but. It, provide something with you know what, what else they do which is all that hard work uh, it's difficult to square to circle that anyway uh, Porro with a long ball looking for Richarlison he's desperate to, to try and win a free kick there and he looks at the referee again again nothing for that he tries to tangle with Hashioka and but uh, yeah it's uh, yeah I mean he, I think he just wants to sort of figure on the field in some way doesn't he uh, mm. Richarlison He's had a difficult time at Spurs. He's had a couple of good moments, a couple of little breakthrough moments, but uh, just recently out of the team and 
the problem for him is that whilst he's been out, the team Spurs have actually been scoring quite freely. I, I think, yeah, there, there are lots of problems. I, I sort of, uh, well, the ball just might break from there. Brendan Johnson into his shots. The ball taken off him there by Mengi just at the death. And then he, he flings himself down to the ground. This game may be not done and dusted just yet. It's a foul in the middle of the park and it's a loot and free kick there. Ross Barkley. Referee shows a yellow card as well to uh, uh, the uh, fouler from uh, Tottenham. I didn't see who that was, by the way. But anyway, Barkley will take the free kick once the referee uh, stops faffing about, quite frankly. Yeah, he needs to be a little bit quicker here, Jared G. Let's say we're not quite sure where this nearly 10 minutes of injury time has uh, come from in this uh, first, uh, in this second half. But uh, frustration there for Richardson, a couple of half chances he couldn't quite, uh, couldn't quite finish him off. And it was Hoiberg with the challenge. Yeah, before that, Brendan Johnson poked the ball to Richardson in the box. And, you know... Uh, it, it looked like a good ball, but uh, uh, Mengi just took to boot round it, desperately uh, flicked it away from him. Uh, now uh, Lo Celso makes a break, he goes uh, backwards, and now uh, your doggy uh, shows the pace that he's got as he uh, runs Townsend back into his own half. And he, uh, about uh, four minutes left of this uh, game now, as uh, we see uh, Jagasin, who's surely he's got a bit of pace today, he's not had much defending to do as uh, Tottenham have it again in midfield and well uh, surely uh, a fairly cynical uh, foul there as uh, we just saw Benton Kerr get uh, caught in the ball and uh, he gets shown a yellow card and I think that's quite right. He's been loath uh, seemingly to uh, to book the Tottenham players. Is yeah, he's sort of doing it out towards it. Lo picks up to the, the booking there, says uh, the referee, but it's been... It's not been as strong a finish to this uh, game as I think Postecoglou would have liked. His side is still seeing more of the ball compared to Luton, but that perhaps maybe with uh, the starting midfielders all now off, uh, Besuma, Saar and Madison all off the field, it might have just uh, swung uh, things a little bit more in Luton's favour. But so Luton had that freaking good ball, was played to the edge of the Spurs penalty area, and Carlton Morris is judged to have given a f uh, foul away there, and he's not happy at all. Well, let's take a look at it. Uh, Brendan Johnson uh, is just blocking him off. Um, yeah, he's grabbed himself. He's grabbed his face there, Johnson. He was never even hit in the face, I don't think. No, uh, he's definitely working. He's seen a free kick there. You know, he initiates the contact. He's trying to stop a man running to, to get on the ball. Uh, and it's poor free kick from uh, Rob Edwards' point of view. Again, Luton have acquitted themselves really well today. But <coughs> again, it just uh, looks like going to be one of those days they get nothing for it. As it stands, uh, Spurs will be in fourth position. And although there's seven points off at Man City, still not bad, eh? Uh, Aston Villa, of course, uh, have got Wolves in the game coming up after this. They could leapfrog them. Uh, but it's not a bad position for Tottenham to be in. And I, I'm not sure that, uh, that many would have uh, predicted it. Uh, Kane goes and oh, everything falls apart. And who's Postacoglu anyway? But uh, he, he clearly knows what he's doing, Paul. He does. He really does know what he's doing. And what I like about uh, the, the, the approach is that he hasn't changed from day one. He's got a slightly sort of uh, brash approach with reporters. Not in terms of arrogance, but, you know, he gets asked the same sort of questions. He gives, you know, sort of very snappy answers. He, he's very keen to always point out how he doesn't like teams that dive and teams that time waste. Break off from that, though, because here come Luton on the attack with Kabore. They do. Puts the ball into the box. There's loads of black shirts in the box. The cutback is no good. Wow, they had what a so waste. many. It, it's almost too many. There were almost too many players there. And when, and when the ball went to that back post, it was probably the right ball from Kabore, but it probably dropped to the wrong person and they just ended up dawdling with it. Well, they had five in the box when the ball is floated in. Count them. One, two, three, four, five. There were, there were five defenders. You know, so wrong uh, choice there from uh, Jordan Clark, though. After he takes it down on the chest, he's got to look to try and pick out some of the teammates in front of goal. And the, play, the ball back towards uh, the edge of the area there is uh, under hit and there was no chance uh, for him to get on the end of it. Yeah, Mengi was trying to get on the end of that. It, it was a, a, a no-look pass, wasn't it? <laughs> you try to fool everybody, but uh, you, you, you can't in a loaded box like that. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, it didn't quite work out. Um, whether they would deserve a point out of this, I, I think they've been plucky, but they have been second best. And, you know, uh, I think the scoreline probably is just about right. There's half a minute left of this game now. That's all. As, uh, again, Tottenham have it and happy to go backwards now as well as forwards, although Romero finds uh, Pedro Porro. I don't know who the man of the match would be. It's a difficult one to work out today, but, uh, yeah, just uh, uh, difficult. I, I, I suppose Son's kept on going and, 
uh, played uh, relatively well and with spirit, but uh, very difficult to judge that today. There, there's no one that sort of stands out as an 8 out of 10 today, really, is it? There's been a few no. sevens and, and a few solid performances, but to say one player so markedly stands out, I don't think there is. I think Luton have given a free kick away here at the edge of their own box. This is after we've had the full nine minutes, so I can't imagine it's going to be much more. Though that, In fact, there will be no more. The referee calls time. It's all over here at uh, the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium after a plucky performance here from Luton. Spurs do come through and they win the game by two goals to one.